In the 1980s, a team of researchers led by UCLA professor Alan Andreessen. Not Anderson, Andreessen. Okay. Well, you, know, you, know, you know the name. We've uh, all, you got uh, Alan. We've all met one. Double A. Yeah. Yep. And on. Studied mundane purchases like soap, toothpaste, trash bags and toilet paper. Who buys these things? It's it's weird. I, I see them in the shops and no one buys these things. Yeah, this is like, what, so, what's going on? Like, what, so what, what, what is it like when people buy these things? What is it like when people How buy How do they these? do it? They get them off the shelf yes. and they put them in the trolley. Then, the, But in the 80s, we didn't know that. <laughs> it was very mysterious. That's why they did it. So it turns it out he says... It was a kind of gentler time. It was, oh. a, gen- it was a kind of time. Mm, I remember the 80s. Yeah. And it was also the time of the high cut bikini pants. Stop it. Which I still wear today. <laughs> so it turns out apparently most shoppers back in the 80s pay almost no attention to how they buy these mundane everyday products. I, they, just, they just buy them habitually. I just, want, I just want to say probably shoppers still in the 2021s uh, don't pay attention to I, I, how they buy their... I don't have that research. ...soap and whatnot. This is a science-based podcast. Right, no, fine, You're going to make fine. shit up. <laughs> don't, I, I think it still holds today. They said it actually makes it tricky for marketers to persuade shoppers to change because they're not paying attention. Okay. So hang on. What were these products again? Things like toothpaste, trash bags, sorry, garbage bags, soap, toilet paper. Your sundries. Your yeah, sundries. Okay. One's yeah. sundries. Mm. One does not ponder one's sundries when no. making purchases. I, I, I just got to say. You're pondering your sundries? No, I, 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 I ponder my sundries. Like, of course you I, fucking I, do. I'm, I'm not a sundry non-ponderer. <laughs> I, I definitely, I, I look closely. Which toothpaste do I want this time? Same as last time, mm, wanker. No, yeah, no. Do you change? Do you actually yeah, change your decisions on the result of pondering? Uh, no, no, no. I no. make snap discussions. <laughs> yeah. I, I change. I definitely change, mainly based on which ones look cooler. Yep. Or, like, finally... <laughs> See, finally what does a cool soap look like? Uh, uh, well, no, finally, it's the toothpaste that comes okay. with charcoal. And, like, yep. finally, I've been waiting for some sort of black toothpaste for yep. ages. Yep. yep. You know, I get the one with grit. Yeah, sure. I want grit that I know I'm being cleaned properly. Um, so, anyway, apparently it makes mm. it harder for marketers to persuade people. But when we experience major life events... Like graduating, getting a new job. Divorce. Yep, divorce. Getting new soap after divorce. Uh, beer, actually. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt that. Seriously. Um, as I say, basically, these major changes, our shopping habits become flexible in ways that are both yeah. predictable and potentially gold mines for retailers. Oh, cool. cool. So divorce is one of them. Apparently, according to this 1980s research in the US, there's an increased chance you'll start buying different brands of beer when you divorce. Mm. I don't think that's true because I love the beers I buy. Um, when a couple move into a new house, they're more likely to change um, cereal. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. When we marry, apparently we're more likely to start buying a new type of coffee. Hmm. I don't know why. It's not well, really okay. Good. So if, if if the two of you had different one of you had different coffee to each other before, then there's going to be a compromise, and you one go, of uh, you is changing. One of you is changing. So okay, fifty percent chance of change hmm. on ma- yeah, uh, let's, let's face it. My, one of one of us is changing. Let's face it. It's not me. I'm a compromiser. I compromise on my favorite brands. Consumers will go through life, going through major life events often don't notice when they're just going through their world. Um, they don't care because they're, sorry, I'll start that again. Consumers going through major life events don't often notice or care that their, shop, their shopping habits have changed. But during those periods, they're much more vulnerable to intervention by marketers. Mm. So basically a precisely timed advertisement sent to a recent divorcee or a new home buyer can change someone's shopping habits for years. Cool. Isn't that fun? So nowadays, the science of habit formation is a major field of research, neurology, psychology, marketing, etc. Not only at major uh, medical centres and unis, but inside very well-financed corporate labs. Oh, of course it is. This is, this is your dream job. Fucking you know, oath l- it is. Last week we spoke about yeah. one of your dream jobs, yeah. which was you know diagnosing people through the TV. This one... And their poo. Yeah, exactly. But this one, yeah. diagnosing uh, what, how you can manipulate people. Zero ethics committee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you, you get the, the, the coin out of it as well. Yeah, you do. You get the cards. You get, you get paid almost better than an academic. Almost. Is that possible? No, no, I don't think it's it really is. not. No, That's not right. what they tell me. <laughs> so in the 21st century, almost every major retailer, at least in the US and probably further, has a predictive analytics mm-hmm. department, which I think is fantastic. Oh, it's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. Yep. Fantastic. So they're devoted to understanding not just consumers' shopping habits, but their personal habits and more efficiently market to them. So Eric Siegel, a consultant and chairman of a conference, a conference, a, a conference called Predictive Analytics World, mm. one, one of my faves. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, the, the, the drinking yeah. they do there, yeah, oh, mate. Pow, poor, poor. He says we're living through a golden age of behavioural research. It's amazing how much we can figure out about how people think. Now, a former chief scientist at Amazon, and you know that's going to be fine. They oh, have, and, and not sinister have, at all. Not sinister nothing, at all. Nothing, no. Doctor Evil about it. 
Um, he says it's like an arms race to hire statisticians nowadays. Mathematicians are suddenly sexy. Now, I contest this, but I'm not a, sta- a chief scientist for Amazon or any other corporation. Well, you could sell out. You could be the stats guy for Amazon. There are so many things in here that make me want to sell out. Um, anyway, so let's go to Andrew Pohl. You know. Sure. Polsky. Okay. Yep. Andrew Pohl has a master's degree in statistics and another in economics. Um, he's been obsessed with the intersection of data and human behavior most of his life. Mm. His parents were teachers, and while other kids were out doing things like uh, going to camp and stuff, he was doing algebra and writing computer programs. He didn't go to stats camp? He did not go to stats camp. Too social. I, did, did, I just think he could. There, there could have been an overlap between camp and writing yeah, computer programs. One in programs. three children won't go to stats camp. Oh, nice, nice. Can you prove that? What's the, what's the confidence <laughs> interval? So he I'm says of himself, oh, the stereo, he's a stereotype of a traditional maths nerd and mm. used to go around basically evangelizing analytics. So in 2002, he just started working as a statistician for Target. Yes. Now, Target are apparently absolute legends in predictive analytics, et cetera, and have been for ages. Okay. Um, and he just started this job. He's sitting in his office, and two colleagues from the marketing department stopped it by his desk, and they said, look, um, if we wanted to figure out if a customer is pregnant, even if she didn't want us to know, can you help us do that? <laughs> It's going to be fine. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. To The Wholesome Show, the Science Stories podcast for people who set up the back of Target or yeah. uh, the back of Amazon, the back of the bus, the back of the s- yeah. schoolroom, anything like that. Back of the stats camp even. Yep. Back, back of the stats camp. In which we do the predictive analytics that no one else would dare to do. I'm sure they dare. No, you don't know what I have in mind. I'm Will Grant. I'm Dr. Roderick, uh, p- predictive uh, analyticist uh, Lamberts. And with us, we have Dr. Adam Henschke. Yeah. And now I'm going to tell you a bit about Adam. There's a reason he's here. He kind of knows. I think he knows. So he's an applied ethicist. Or is it ethicist? Uh, a little from column A, a little from column B. Ethicist. He works in areas across between ethics, technology, and security. How cool is that? How cool did it used to be? Uh, 40. 40? 40 cool? Yep. Um, so you look at ethics of cybersecurity, war, military ethics? Yep. Intelligence ethics? Yep. E- the, in- the ethics of the Internet of Things? Yep. I've got to say, the Internet of Things has always cracked me up as a thing. But we'll get to that. Emerging tech? Yep. Ethics of terrorism and counterterrorism? Yep. Public communication of ethics? Yep. Does it all. Is there any ethics you don't do? Uh, four. Uh, which four? Um, the ethics I, of ethics? Uh, legal ethics. Nice, okay. Um, you don't have to list all the things <laughs> you don't do. That's, that's, a, that's all right. I just, it just seems like you, get, you covered a lot of ethics. Um, are you going to tell, tell me that um, trying to work out if someone is pregnant and they don't want you to know is unethical? I'm not going to tell you that. I have no but idea. There is no way that that could be unethical. I just can't see exactly. any possibility yeah, exactly. of, the, of gathering that information. Now, now at some point, Adam, you, you in, know, in careless ways, <laughs> could be in any negative way. Is that a sarcastic ethic, ethical comment? or um, Is there sarcastic ethics? Oh, do you do that? Uh, the ethics of sarcasm? Yes, I do. Fail. You've written about 800 books, right? Or you're writing 800 books too? Uh, I've got a couple. A yeah, couple? Yeah, yeah. Ethics on. in an Age of Surveillance? Yep, that's the one. Fuck yeah. The big one. I've got a couple edited ones. Um, surveillance is now, or was that a long time ago? Surveillance. Uh, We've given up, right? 2017? Uh, yeah, so no, I, no, I, I meant when surveillance was. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, I solved cool. it. Cool, so, so we're not being surveilled <laughs> anymore by... <laughs> no, we are, but ethically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all right. Wave to the camera. There you go. Yeah. Hello, no one else can see. Yeah, exactly. So I fixed that in 2017. Okay, cool, um, cool. And I'm doing a couple of books at the moment, uh, co-authored ones, one on uh, foreign interference and information operations. You pro or con? Um, seven. Seven. Um, That's pro. The, the other one on... What's that one on? On the ethics of intelligence institutions... Um, so spies and all that sort oh, of stuff. Oh, not institutions that are smart. No, no, no. I don't know if they're point to one. Yeah, yeah. No, and exactly. so, so there's the ethical question for last week. It was, you know, if you, if someone yeah. leaves their poo, yeah. is it theirs anymore? And can you? Can no, you as far as I'm concerned, once I flush, it's yours. Yeah, there you if, go. if you want it, man. <laughs> well, then the it. interesting thing is the derived information from that. Oh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah, the poo. I mean, who gives a shit? But anyway, we're yeah. not we're not going to we're not going to re prosecute last week's topic. But I also have another book uh, that I'm writing at the moment yeah. on this one's on ethics and the Internet of Things. Oh, so I this like is a things. Precursor to what may what may come. There may be something exactly. related. Yep. It may be more down the inter- Internet of shit, but I gather yeah, they're exactly. related. Yep, yep. So um, I'm gonna. This episode's going to be. It's not going to be one story. It's going to be essentially three. Okay. Um, and the third area... I'm down for three. I, I, I'm good. 
well, they're going to get progressively, let's say, less comfortable. Mm. And the third one may be quite uncomfortable for some listeners. Nice. Or not for me, I don't mind. But, you know, we'll ease out in a lighter note and we'll talk about, you know, science, science communication and, and religion. Mm. Sounds excellent. So it'll be fine. That's Go the four, That's the wind out. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought a little, little bit of a, you know, a pre-open it. So, um, yeah, I'll let you know as it wanders through. Will, you look so relaxed now. No, it's fine. It's Why fine. are you biting no, your I, lip? You never I just, bite I just your want lip. to know what the uncomfortable is. I, you know. Oh, you're going to know. You'll know when you know. Okay. Yeah. It will be apparent from the yeah. topic. Yep. So back to our, <laughs> our target statistician, Andrew Poole. I was going to say doctor, but he's not. He only has master's degrees. <laughs> so Master Poole? Master Poole, exactly. Uh, this story is taken from a much longer piece from 2012, by the way, in New York Times by Charles Duhigg, who's written some books on nudging and shit. Anyway, so you remember our tale really begins when Andrew Poole was asked by the marketing department. Yeah, yeah, cool. Can we find out if a customer is pregnant, even if she doesn't want us to know? Which is, is, is a cool way of thinking just beforehand. Isn't it? Like, like whether, whether you go down and solve that problem, just mm. going, you know what I want to know? Mm. I want to know if someone's pregnant when they don't want us to know. Yep. Like yeah. Particularly when they don't yep. want us or to know. Or when they may not even know themselves. That's yeah. a bit of fun. That, yeah. that, that's, wouldn't you like to know that though? <laughs> wouldn't you, like, you could be that person going around the street going, look, uh, Elizabeth, I yeah. got some news for you. Uh, You're pregnant. Congratulations. Yeah. Or other Mm. I think you're not allowed to do that in this modern society. Although I do think, uh, and it might come later, I think there's a really interesting ethical question. It came, it came with yep. uh, some murders around. There's it. only I'm one interesting ethical question. No, I, got I'll 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 I don't want to jump answer ahead answer. of the story, and I don't no. think this is the story. But I think Are you going to murder us? No, no, there's, 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 there's a murder, and, <laughs> the, and a murder could have been prevented by telling someone that they're uh, oh, yes. making a pregnancy public. Yep. Make the pregnancy public. Am I getting murdered or is it someone no, you, else? No, you're fine. You're fine. someone else. Tell your story. I and, I, and I just want to add to it. Just no, murder it. whoever you want if it's not me. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> live and let live as long as you're letting me live. So Andrew Paul was asked this question. So at the moment a baby arrives, new parents' habits are more flexible, as we discussed in the opening. Yeah, sure, people sure. Go, Suddenly shit. buying nappies when previously you weren't. No. It's fucking weird. Like, I mean, you, 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 you well, normally... Don't, does it bad that I don't have a kid but I still buy nappies I buy nappies yeah uh, okay alright yeah. suddenly you're buying something else who's the you're weirdo saying, here yeah, you say you're not <laughs> buying nappies who's the weirdo I'm here I'm going to name all the baby <laughs> products I'll find one thing that you're not buying <laughs> two out of three of us don't have kids and buy nappies <laughs> one of us does have kids and bought nappies I think the freak yeah you worked that out yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so when parents it's, this is a time when parents are exhausted and overwhelmed you probably didn't know that no oh, no their shopping patterns uh, and brand loyalties are apparently up for grabs. So if companies can identify pregnant shoppers, they can earn millions. But target marketers wanted to get the timing better. So they wanted to reach them earlier than any of other retailer. Don't wait for other people to get the jump on you. No. You know, get, no. In there, get in there early. We want to identify them earlier. So specifically. And can I just interrupt you? Yes, I please. can't see how this can go wrong. Neither can I. I cannot see any possible no. negative outcomes of None. this story. This is just a happy win story for everyone, isn't it? This, yeah. You're just here as window dressing to make exactly. us look ethical. Exactly. Yeah. There's nothing you know, you know what? We're going to get to a point, though. And, and it's just going to be liberals gnashing their teeth. Oh, this is sad. <laughs> and everyone, everyone else is happy. <laughs> in the story. That's going to be the result. Everyone else is happy. Look at you lefty, lardy, yeah, slipper. Owning world. the libs. That's what this story is all about. Are we self-owning? Yeah, is so. that legal? Well, no, you've got to be in parliament for that. Yeah. Anyway, so specifically the marketers said they wanted to spend, they wanted to send specially designed ads to women in their second trimester. It's a magical time. It's a beautiful time. As opposed to the ads that aren't specially designed. But anyway. Yeah, but they, they don't want specially designed. I'm just saying, I'm just saying trimester. it's not really an ad if it's not specially designed. It can like, be. Buy our shit. Is that special? That's just design. That's an advertisement. I'm, I'm now so we're special. getting into the metaphysics of advertisements. I, yeah, I you I didn't invite me in to talk about the metaphysics of It was always going to go there. I, I mean, you know, most of our episodes do. All right, so they specially design them. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to have a baby. Yep. Buy the stuff. Yep. Yeah, and so this is, of course, when they buy you know prenatal vitamins, maternity clothing, etc. Yeah. So the quote runs, we knew that if we could identify them in their second trimester, there's a good chance we could capture them for years. Why not the first trimester? I don't know. It's too hard to predict. At that point, this is early ages of this analytic uh, data technology. Oh, you're going to tell me that, uh, that, that their data got accurate at a certain point in the hidden pregnancy, but not earlier? I wouldn't be surprised if they're more accurate now than they were before. Now they, they know the day before you're going to get pregnant. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you bought 17 vodka cruises. Yeah. Someone's going to... That sperm is looking very accurate right yeah, exactly. now, I can tell. So yep. tonight's the night. It's going to happen. You're walking like a guy who's going to knock someone yep. up. I am thinking, like, because we are going to talk about the Internet of Things later, there is possibly some form of Internet of Things devices that will be designed which can measure 
you know, say the temperature of the the male oh, and female look, no, of course. areas, and then it was like, yeah, yeah, it's a high huge, chance. huge, mm-hmm. huge market for that. So, like, they, like yeah. people having difficulty conceiving, exactly. it's, it, absolutely. Yep. Yep. And I don't doubt that uh, again, marketers would yeah. choose for unethical things. Exactly. But anyway, who said that? unethical? Yeah. Yeah. Just okay, marketers be marketing. Mm. Isn't that the way it works? Yeah, what can, yeah they just uh, it's, it's working with the market, and people have a right to buy things. Why Damn do you right. hate people and freedom? This is what I don't Hang on, understand. no, 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 no. I'm, the one, that, I'm yeah. the one that's owning the liberals and love oh, okay. <laughs> <Mom, laughs> <like>, Sorry, <laughs> you're the script on in, me. <laughs> in this scenario, in this scenario, you're the idiot liberals. So, yeah. so I'm on the side of freedom. Right, so just, okay. Look, My mistake, to be fair, I'm mostly the idiot liberal in my scenario. <laughs> so anyway, as Paul carries on telling Duhigg, the author, as soon as we get them buying diapers from us, they're going to start buying everything else too. If you're rushing through the store looking for bottles and you pass orange juice, you'll grab a carton. And then, of course, oh, there's that new DVD I want. Oh, it's the olden days. Okay, so so, so this is cereal, be, towels, beyond everything. just just you know getting into the the particular baby stuff. Yeah, they want to shift going, their brand. We can shift you on everything. To buy everything from fucking Target. Wow, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, they're not. Oh, they're, you, see, you've got you've got small. I'm thinking, thinking small. I'm thinking small. You're like you're going to be pregnant no. for a few more months. That'll be enough for us. You will be a terrible marketer. Yeah, yeah. No, this is Thanos level. They're doing they're doing proper yep. rearrange your yep. universe yep. around. We want around your everything. You. Yeah. So apparently, though, the problem was, at least in 2012, it's, it, identifying pregnant customers is harder than you might think. Mm. Allegedly. Pregnant customers who don't quite know it yet, haven't made it public. Yeah, no, wadd- I, waddling I, I, in I'm with a large pregnant belly, it's like probably pregnant. Probably pregnant. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, but I'm guessing that there, it's... I was already thinking it's moderately hard mm. for people that are uh, not making a pregnancy public and, and there's no outside uh, signs. Yeah. I'm guessing it's not super easy. Not super easy. That's the way it is. So Paul started first with looking at target baby shower registries. Okay, sure. Because, you know, you'd imagine there'd be information in that and there would be willingly disclosed information. Here's what I want. Uh, first, I want a baby shower registry. Yeah, that I think probably that's... probably means a baby. That's a pretty easy one. Yeah, well, you know, look, he's only got a master's. Um, two. So he ran test after test. He analysed the data and before long he started to see some useful patterns. So, for example, lotions. A lot of people lotions. buy a lot of lotions at this sort of time. What, what's the, at, so this is second trimester. Yep. Or? Second trimester, large quantities of okay. unscented lotion. You got the you got the be- you got the belly rub. You uh, got to rub the belly. Someone who has has rubbed a belly like that, you know, d- 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 you and need the dads lotions. buy the lotion. They you got need, the other rub. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's uh, how it works. Uh, uh, um, another analyst noted sometimes in the first 20 weeks, sometime within there, a lot of pregnant women would load up on supplements, calcium, magnesium, zinc, etc. As sure. you'd expect. Okay. Uh, many shoppers will purchase soap and cotton balls, but when someone suddenly starts buying lots of scent-free soap, extra big bags of cotton balls, in addition to hand sanitizers, washcloths, it's an indication that maybe delivery date's coming closer. Apparently, there's a pattern. Mm-hmm. I don't know that one. Anyway. Well, you don't do stat. You don't have a master's in stats yeah, and uh, economics. Uh, you know. His PhD. I also, also my, my, so. my kids are eight and ten now, and so I, no I, re- I remember nothing. No. Nothing from eight and ten years ago. So I think that's fair. And you were clearly uh, some form of bad mother. Indeed, indeed. I was. I, I, was I was a terrible you mother. Lotioning so. yourself. You weren't pumping yourself up full of. <laughs> oh no, I was lotioning. I was definitely oh, yeah. lotioning. <laughs> I'm all over the lotioning. He's lotioning it's right now. It's the cotton balls. I did. <laughs> exactly. I didn't do the cotton balling. Exactly. So. Yeah. yeah, you've blown it. So um, he ended up identifying about twenty five products, which, when you sort of cluster them together and analyze them, he could start to assign each shopper a pregnancy prediction score. Yes, it's a pregnancy score. Yeah, how good's that? Yeah. It's basically some kind of factor analysis thing, you know, or principal components analysis. Did he? I, I, you it. know, as, as, a, as a key example of uh, putting this into the real world, Yes. Uh, did he test this against these people? Yes. Oh, so, so, okay, he used the baby showers as, as the, they're having a baby. That was just Therefore, preliminary data. Well, how did, how did he check? Like, he, a bunch of people buy all these how things. Did he, did, did he go what's, and, what's wrong with getting a false positive here? Again, how could there be any problems with saying to someone you're pregnant when they're not? Big call. Being sarcastic. Yeah. (laughs) No, I'm not being sarcastic. (laughs) What's sarcasm? Yeah, exactly. So you're um, being sarcastic. You are. So more importantly, he said he could he could also estimate their due dates within a very small window, so Target could send more coupons timed at very specific stages of pregnancy. And so the author of this article goes on. Is is a quote. It's a lengthy one. One Target employee I spoke to provided a hypothetical example. Take a fictional Target shopper named Jenny Ward. Why she needs a name, I don't know. Oh, you do? No, you could put a label on things. She's 23, obviously, like most fictional Target shoppers are. She lives in Atlanta, and in March, she bought some cocoa butter lotion. We all did. Uh, she also bought a purse large enough to double as a diaper bag, okay, zinc well, and magnesium yeah. supplements, and a bright blue rug. The rug's the killer. Isn't it? The rug? The rug. Bright, bright, bright blue rug. Yeah, you're going not pregnant. 
Um, there's, say, an 87% chance she's pregnant and that her delivery date is sometime in late August. What's more, because of the data attached to her guest ID number, Target knows how to trigger Jenny's habits. Trigger her habits. Yeah. That's, that's See, nice. again, ethics not even in play here. Mm, no. it's whatever. No. What the no. fuck ever. You gave him the number. I mean, you gave him the details. So they know um, if she receives a coupon via email, it will, make, it will most likely cue her to buy online. They know that if she receives an ad in the mail on Friday, she frequently uses it on a weekend trip to the store. Mm-hmm. It's fucking wonderful. They know that if they reward her with a printed receipt that entitles her to a free cup of Starbucks coffee, she'll use it when she comes back again. I know, it's great, isn't it? It's cool, ethics, ethics is all good. Um, in the past, that knowledge had limited value. I know, this is, who cares? After all, Jenny purchased only some cleaning supplies at Target. There was only so many psychological buttons they could yeah, push. Okay. But now that she's pregnant, everything is up for grabs. So in addition to triggering Jenny, Jenny's habits to buy more cleaning products, they can also start including offers for an array of products. Some more obvious than others. The orange a, juice, a woman, the other things. Yeah, yeah and, a, and a woman at her stage of pregnancy might be interested in. So he applied the program to ev- uh, every regular female shopper in Target's national database. Oh, awesome. Oh, every awesome. regular female <laughs> shopper in their national you know, database. I, I, I don't like the sexism here that says that uh, there can't be uh, male shoppers that might be shopping for pregnancy-related uh, purchases. Yes. Uh, you know. But there are. They're missing out here. All mm. I'm just saying. I know. Just to redo the stats for him. This is 2012. So there is some data that I remember, you might even cover it later, that um, expectant fathers will actually uh, buy more beer. I, I, I'm amazed to hear that. Yep. And so <laughs> you, know, you gest- uh, gesticulating at the beer is actually an indication. Well, you need Target to sit there and say, do you need beer? It turns out that your loved one is possibly pregnant. Do you need more beer? So, you know, you get, yeah. the, you get the man and the woman in here. And I do like that you say need because that's sensible. Of course. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Because you didn't drink when you were no. pregnant? No. Out of solidarity. I, mm. I can't remember. He, I can't remember. <laughs> that was, he, that, he was, that was a long time. No, no, You no, did no, drink. No, I remember. No. I was there. I saw it. I, I, I certainly I – d- I don't think I changed my habits that way. That's what they much. want you to think. He was drinking in the delivery room. Everyone says so. Mm. So every regular female shopper in Target nationally was targeted. So he had lists of tens of thousands of women at the end who were most likely pregnant. If they could entice these women or their husbands to yeah, visit there you Target, go. Good. See. Yeah, it's not it's not sexist, it's just racist. And if they could it's entice not. them to it's buy, not. it might be. It's not. <laughs> go on. You don't know it is racist. Don't just add, w- add words into the story. You can't just add words. No, I wrote racist here in crayon. Um, so they know they basically they could target uh, get people into Target to buy baby-related products. Then the company's Q routine reward calculators, Q routine reward. Which so is what is Q? Uh, you get like, a Q, it okay. triggers the routine, you get the reward. This is Charles Dewig's work. Yeah, okay, he's cool. written this article. He's right into that. So you could trigger their, their calculators, that, that, sorry, trigger these routines. Their calculators would kick in, their brain calculators, and start pushing them to buy groceries, bathing suits, toys, clothing, etc. apparently. Once you start clicking into the routines and the habits. Okay. So Paul, our statistician, shared this list with the marketers. And they were allegedly ecstatic. Mm. I can imagine they were. Soon he was getting invited to meetings well above his pay grade. And eventually he, of course, raised his pay grade because this dude was doing shit. Yeah, fair enough. Um, At some point, someone asked an important question. How are women going to react when they figure out how much Target knows? (laughs) The answer is obviously they're they're fine with it. Well, happy. Yeah, happy. uh, Was it someone inside Target that raised this question or someone outside Target? No, that's not clear, but I'm going to say it could have been both or either. Mm. Okay. Right. Yeah, well, you're an ethicist, apparently. I mean, mm-hmm. you've written 900 books and mm-hmm. some stuff. Can you see any problem with that? I can't. I, I, I honestly can't see any issue. What? Yeah. Can you, <laughs> you stop being sarcastic? <laughs> you, stop, you, you know, at some point, at some point, the listeners are going to say, "Give me, give me the real stuff." Yeah. Uh, can you just clarify what was the what was the year this was again? 2012 was the interview. 2012. So this the was paper's 2010. 2012. This is yeah. early 2000. So so uh, oh, so yeah. early two. And yeah. I get I 2002. Get he started massively mm. eye opening for its time. Uh, yeah. That that 2002, some some guys doing this, and this is under the radar, and that, that and and mm. and by 2012, people are like, "Holy, this is blowing our mind," and yet I feel like from 2021, I like, "Oh, bless, look yeah, at it's you, so simple and oh, sweet. bless." Yeah, exactly. Like yep. you were worried about surveillance capitalism, yep. where you know they could manipulate <laughs> your purchases to make you make you buy more well, stuff. Post my, my, d- my concerns to Facebook, please. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I just feel, I, and, and I get mm. you're going to tell us some ethical issues here, but I just. <laughs> Feel like the world has the world yeah. has died 
dived so far into this yep. that um, the ethics haven't gone away. We've just dialed up. There's worse things, as you're going to tell us in a second. How do you know that? God, look at him preempting you. Well, uh, uh, sorry. Adam, sorry. Are you bothered at all at the moment? Um, I'm, I'm feeling a little offended that he's he's basically trying to mansplain ethics to me. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, he does that. Uh, if I'm explaining to a man, <laughs> it's not mansplaining. It's double mansplaining. It's just, it's just <laughs> out it's reverse mansplaining. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's outside explaining. Like, <laughs> outside explaining. Exactly. I'll allow it. So, so what? far, no, the ethics... I was trying to give him a window here to tell me the problems. <laughs> Adam. No, wait, we've got, to, we've got to wait for the story to finish because oh, it gets even better. Okay. How would you know? And this is, no one's ever heard this story. So <laughs> at some point, p- people ask this question, how are women going to react? And so the quotes, if we send someone a catalogue and say, congratulations on your first child, and they've never told us they're pregnant, that's going to make some people that's a bit uncomfortable. Much. That's a bit much. We've got photos of when you conceived as well. Mm. That, that, that would also yeah. be a bit if, too much. Here, like, we'll here's get to first, that. Yeah, yeah here's, here's the moment. I can yep. see, capture this. Uh, your yeah. first ultrasound. Yep. We're very conservative about compliance. Uh, we, we are very conservative about compliance with all privacy laws, Paul said to the author. But even if you're following the law, you can do things where people get queasy. <laughs> now, can I step in here? And yes, this please. is where I will be an expert. Uh, for for the listeners who might not be aware of this, ethics and law are different. What? And sometimes what is legal might not be ethical. What? I know. So the law could possibly be problematic, especially mm. when you have new technologies and behaviours that are afforded by that new technology. The law might be a little bit behind the times. Are you suggesting our legal institutions are not swift? Ah, uh, let me get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an hour to think about it. So about a year after Paul created his pregnancy prediction model, a man walked into Target outside Minneapolis and demanded to see the manager. <laughs> he, he was clutching coupons that had been sent to his daughter. Okay, all right, yeah. And he was angry. According can to I can I get a can I do we have ages <laughs> uh, ages on this? I mean, is, is, this, is, this is, will come. is his thirty five year old daughter no, who lives well, in? She lives with him. Let's let's get to that. But okay. why don't why don't we go straight to the next quote that will reveal mm. that? Um. My daughter got this in the mail, he said. She's still in high school. Okay. And you're sending her coupons for baby clothes and cribs. Are you trying to encourage her to get pregnant? Because his daughter was not sexually active at this time, of She's course. in high school and she's, she's my little school. girl. Exactly. Yeah. The manager didn't have any idea what the man was talking about and he looked at the mailer. Sure enough, it was addressed to the man's daughter, contained advertisements for maternity clothing, nursery furniture, pictures of smiling infants. Surely at this point you go, this seems above my pay grade, or <laughs> give me a, give me, like... I quit, sir. I'm going to go and work at a, a Donut well, King. You just, you just go, oopsie. Yeah. Yeah, oopsie. Mm. Isn't that how most ethical <laughs> exactly. s- s- things are sold? <laughs> oopsie. Yeah. My in, bad. In my yep. defence, I said oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the manager had no idea what was going on. Um, so he apologised. I think it was actually I don't know it was a he. It could have been and a gave him. A, oh no, it was a he. Starbucks coupon. Yep. So, so the manager apologised and then called a few days later to apologise again. Like I'm not. Not only was I sorry, I'm really sorry. This is a double. Oops. Yeah, I'm realising I should yeah. be more sorry than I was just then <coughs> yep. because something bigger is happening here and it's scary and weird and yeah. I'm super sorry. And I appear to be part of that machine. So it turns out that on the phone a couple of days later, the father was apparently uh, somewhat abashed. I had a talk with my daughter, he said, and it turns out there's been some activities in my house I haven't been completely aware of. Yeah, She's cool. due in August. I owe you an apology. Oh, there you go. I've got to say, I mean, I'm no ethicist. Mm. No, he doesn't. No. Well, can I just go back a little bit? Because no. there's an ethical challenge here. Is there? That, um, Are you the that, expert? No, well, no. no. <laughs> I just think father reading daughter's mail, whether, whether, whether she is pregnant or not, you know, there's a bit of privacy so, breach as there. I, as I understand it, though, the package that arrived was, congratulations, you're pregnant. So this wasn't like a closed envelope. This, the daughter. You know, going, going yeah. back to tar- Target mm. being uh, conservative mm. on these sorts, of, that doesn't sound conservative. Mm. Like sending things out, congratulations, <laughs> you're pregnant, is a little bit wild. Like it's a, it's a little bit kind of not on the, uh, let's say, the, the careful side of things. Is it's, it? it's really not. Yeah. As, as a comms <laughs> package here, I, I, think, I think I just got to err on the side of, don't do that publicly. Yep. You know, he, you might enjoy some lotion. We're guessing you might enjoy some yep. lotion. Yeah, exactly. There's many ways that you can say this. Uh, that some of your friends it. may be pregnant and they need some vouchers. Exactly. You know, yeah, so in, in, in summary, we would like to say oopsie. Yep. <laughs> and in summary, you, oopsie. Coffee vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> So when Duig, the author, approached Target to discuss Paul's work, its representatives wouldn't talk to him. No doubt. I'm shocked, I tell you, shocked. Yeah. Quote from them, Our mission is to make Target's preferred shopping destination for our guests by delivering outstanding value, continuous innovation, and exceptional guest experience, they wrote in a statement to the author. 
We've developed a number of research tools that allows us to gain insights into trends and preferences within different demographic segments of our guest population. Yeah, great. Um, so when he sent Target a complete summary of his report, this report we are reading now and, and more detail, they replied, almost all of your statements contain inaccurate information and publishing them would be misleading to the public. Mm. We do not intend to address each statement point by point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so I'm, I'm smelling contradiction there. Yeah, okay. The company declined to identify what was inaccurate, <laughs> which I love. Bits of it are wrong. Which bits? Fuck off. Not telling you. Yeah. You don't tell people where they're right. Though. Mm-hmm. Like, no, like you never tell people where they're right. Well, as a thesis supervisor, you know, I say to my PhD students, you're wrong. Yeah. Fix it. And they say, where? It's like, you're wrong. Fix Just it. In don't there, be wrong. In there, be in not there. wrong. Exactly. What's wrong with you? Why aren't you less <laughs> wrong than this? So they, dec- they declined to identify what was inaccurate, but they later added that Target is in compliance with all federal and state laws, including those related to protected health information. Yeah, okay. So again... Just like ethics, exactly the same as law, I think yep, we just learned. Exactly. No difference. <laughs> they were both legal and therefore ethical. Yep. So when he offered, the author offered to fly to Target's headquarters to discuss its concerns, uh, he was emailed by someone that said, no, nah, we're not going to meet you. So he flew out anyway and he was told he was on a list of prohibited visitors. Ah. I've been instructed not to give you access and ask you to leave, said a uh, very nice security guard named mm. Alex. Shout out to Alex. Good for you for being nice. <laughs> um, so using data to predict a woman's pregnancy, Target realised after Paul perfected his model could be a public relations disaster. Mm. Apparently people don't like this. No, it's weird. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I don't see it. I feel like people are just being prissy. Yeah. Yep. You know? Precious. Yep. So after Andrew Pohl, our statistician hero, built his pregnancy prediction model and after he identified thousands of female shoppers who are most likely pregnant... After someone pointed out that some of these women might be a little upset, Target started to think, oh, maybe we should slow down a little bit. Sure. See, they're decent. Corporations are people and this person has a heart. That's what I'm thinking. Marketing departments started to conduct a few tests by choosing a small random sample of women from Paul's list and mailing them combinations of... Do do you love it, yes or no, when Mm. we tell you you're pregnant? Or, yeah. or, or when we, we, tell tell your parents. we tell your dad <laughs> yeah. that yeah. you're that pregnant that when you shouldn't be. Yeah. Or much do you maybe, like? maybe your workplace. <laughs> Would you love this? Yeah, exactly. Yes or no? Uh, Dear well, Catholic Church where you work and anti-abortion yeah, clinic. Exactly. Yep. All of these. What, what would be the worst place for us to tell? Should we go there first? Tele- right? Television. Um, so they go on to say, uh, we, we have the capacity to send every customer an ad booklet specifically designed for them. And it says, here's everything you bought last week and a coupon for it, one target executive was saying. We do that for grocery products all the time. But for pregnant women, Target's goal was selling them baby items they didn't even know they needed yet. Mm. Again, any ethics? No, no problem, right? Straight up, straight up fine. So with pregnancy products, though, we learned that some women react badly. See, that executive is going straight to the top. What are they reacting badly to? <laughs> well, this is, uh, they didn't go into that. Oh. So we started mixing in all these ads for things we knew pregnant women would never buy. So the well, ads looked random. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Here's your lotion and also... A shotgun, <laughs> three kilos of fertiliser. So it looks random. Like okay. a hat, yep. lobster. Yeah. Yeah, like, there you go. Yep. So we put an ad for a lawnmower next to diapers. Again, she might want to. I buy both. Um, we put a coupon for wine glasses next to infant clothes. Okay, there's one that you probably don't want. Also, and if they do do that, you'd be like, and we're not judging you, but we're judging you. Mm-hmm. And that way, they say it looks like all the products were chosen by chance, allegedly. So we found out that as long as a pregnant woman thinks she isn't being spied on, she'll use the coupons. So you see it's fine because they now don't think they're being spied on. So that covers the ethics. (laughs) Kisses. Just for people who aren't watching right now, Adam is is flinching, verging on going fetal. So I I was pretty familiar with this story beforehand. I didn't know these additional details because one of the things that I, I think of a lot in ethics, it's often hard to sit there and say, well, you know, here's my ethical position and you're wrong. So yeah. My approach is always to Worse. go... I know, I know. I'm a little bit of a lightweight in that regard. But my position is always to go, well, your values suggest this or your ethical position is uh, this. Yeah. This holds you to that. It's yeah. kind of basic consistency thing. Yeah. You note that uh, when the, the story began, it was about when people are in certain kind of life transitions, they are much more vulnerable to advertising. Yes. And Target knew this. And this was actually one of the things that prompted the initial thing 
that they, they began with. And now they're saying, well, because we're only sending you things that aren't to do with pregnancy, we're still exploiting your vulnerability. No, no, no. no. But, you know, it's, Adam, it's, Adam? it's because something, something target. I just got to go backwards <laughs> a little bit here because because this this word vulnerable, mm. that's ethicist or liberal code word. You know, yeah. instead, let's just say they're open. They're open, they're open. to new Beautiful. experiences. Beautiful. Exploitable. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no, but no. But in a not judgmental. No, sense. I, I want to. I want to say they're ready. They're ready. <laughs> ready. They're ready for change. Would you go for us? Look, would you say prime? Can we just stop? Yeah, you know, but just remember that vulnerable is an adjective here. Yes. So, yeah, this is true. so they. The, you well, know, exploitable, I think, is a better. Uh, that is also an adjective. Yeah, it is. I, 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 I think these are these are adjectives that we can say. Yes, that person is vulnerable, exploitable, mm. ready to be ready to accepting. be accepting. But they are also from from potentially their perspective, mm. they they're, they're just their life choices may be a little bit more open than others. So I just I just you know there there, there is a way of looking at this that isn't so evil. Well, who said that uh, being exploitable is necessarily evil? Oh, I don't know. Adjectives, adjectives exploit, Whoa. exploit is a, is a negative well, we've, adjective. We've passed the semantic apocalypse seven years ago, so basically, I can say words mean whatever we want. That was decided. That was decided. Everyone I did knows not that. get the memo or whatever <laughs> we call it now. No, you got the memo. It just meant something else. All right, I'm just going to oh, go. With, I'm just going to go with exploitable. Yeah, does do, co- from a common sense mm. framing that sounds that sounds negative. That sounds negative. But so uh, what would you mean by exploit? Uh, take advantage of. So oh. take advantage to to make them do something they otherwise wouldn't that is not necessarily in their best interests, but, doesn't that but is in my like best interest. Exactly what they were doing with their whole marketing program. Mm, I don't know. Say, I, we want people to buy more. Their habits don't normally change, especially for the sundries, as we've discussed. And yes. now we want them to change at, those habits. At what habits point have we said so, more? So are at, you at reacting point, to the fact that it's about pregnant ladies? No, at what point is this saying mm. this is not in their best interests? They, and, and, and look, I hate no, that. No, 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 no. So, no, this is the thing. This is the thing. This is where you're bringing your baggage in here, uh, good sir. I'm baggage free. By, by, I'm your baggage own, free. by your own definition of exploit, it's about me gaining some advantage. It's not necessarily to your disadvantage. Are you saying there's a, there's uh, a nice definition that's, that's of exploit? No, can you, can you, can everyone can win in yeah, an exploitation exactly. and process. That, that is like in, in a kind of slightly less facetious position. Um, that is the whole notion of, of marketing. I benefit from this because I'm a, I'm a consumer. I get a better purchase that I want. Yeah. Awesome. But the company gets to make more money. That's a position of exploitation. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm better off. But I'm going to say that in this situation, what they were seeking to do was exploit people who are would, in... Would, would, would the, the man or woman on the street happily use exploit in that in that very mutual exploiting... We're better than that. We have PhDs. I, we're exactly. not the men I, I am not the, the man or woman on I just the street. Wanna, I just want to say that the man or the woman on the yeah. street would take exploit to mean that someone gains more out of this situation. Yeah, but they do. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. By your own definition. See, this is what I mean. I'm I'm not trying to put ethics into your brain. No. I'm working from your brain's position and going, this is what the implications are. I, 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 I don't know if you got me. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. It's in your I, brain. I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm anyway. going gonna, gonna to move us along now yes. because otherwise you guys are going to get lost yes. and I won't be able to find you Good. again. Good. Story tell. I'm and this is only part you. one story. This too. is part one. But the others are shorter. But oh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll shut us off at time. So it doesn't matter. No, 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 but we want to get to the good ones. I, I, press, no, the, I you, press the kill button at one hour. You won't want to kill this. I no. press the kill button. You won't want to kill this. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't. We're going to be fine. So basically they were saying, um, as long as we don't spook her, the lady, it works. As long as we don't spook her. Yeah. Okay. So as long as she thinks the person in question is getting the same shit as everyone else, it's not so bad. Um, so in other words, if Target piggybacked on existing habits, the same cues and rewards, they already knew customers that got customers to buy cleaning products. So she's supplies, a regular shotgun purchaser. Doing it anyway, um, exactly. Now we'll just add in diapers to that. Yeah, well, that's exactly what they say. Instead, we just insert a new routine. Or a new brand of shotgun, a more expensive shotgun. Yeah, mm. yeah exactly. So that's fine. Yep. So so there's a cue. Oh, a coupon for something I need. A routine. Buy, buy, buy. And a reward. I can take that off my list. The reward of taking it off a list is great. Once the shopper is inside the store, Target will hit her with cues and rewards to entice her to purchase everything she normally buys everywhere else. The oh, your pregnancy aisle. Yep. You've just discovered you're pregnant. And you, you also this. need a lawnmower. Yep. So as long as Target camouflaged how much it knew about that person and as long as the habit felt familiar, the new behaviour would take hold. Completely fine. Soon after the new ad campaign began, Target's mum and baby sales exploded. Did they really? Okay. Yeah. I, I did want to know if there was yeah, success so it, it in this. It worked. Okay. Um, they don't break out specific figures, but they say between, for each division, but they say between 202 when poll started and 210, Target's revenues grew from 44 billion to 67 billion. Um, in 2005, the company's president boasted to a room full of investors about the company's, quote, 
heightened focus on items and categories that appeal spe- to specific guest segments, such as mum and baby. I love such as. So Paul was promoted repeatedly. He's been invited to speak at conferences, and um, apparently Paul said to the author of this article, the last time they spoke, I never expected this would become such a big deal. But of course, um, I forgot to add, Target forbade him from speaking to this author <laughs> ever again. Final comments. What's the big deal? <laughs> Come on, I'm rich, bitch, it's fine. So yeah, basically, um, there wasn't a lot more to be able to be told by this author anyway, because <coughs> Target said, naughty, naughty, don't talk to him anymore. So that's fine. Mm. As we've already discussed, no ethics issues. No. Although, funnily enough, um, in my book that I've got, um, I do. I think it's on the first page. I talk explicitly about this example. Oh yeah. So if you do want to read more ethics on this, oh my god, an ad! Oh, I know. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. See, this, is, it, is it ethical to, to 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 dump mm. an ad suddenly yeah. suddenly in someone's yeah, podcast? No, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying you should buy. It. I'm just saying that there's a book out there. Called ethics in an age of surveillance. Don't be a wuss. You're allowed and, to say you should buy it, buy it. And, and you may you may be interested in buying it. You you've got a yeah. surveillance score of eighty seven percent. You know you really want to read this book. Yeah, it will change your life. What, how, who's got a surveillance score of eighty seven? You do. He the, said the the listeners. How do they know? How do I've, you know? I've just told them. How would they? <laughs> they'll, they'll find out if they buy the book. <laughs> Prove me wrong. I would buy the book, but Adam's obviously going to give us both signed copies. Absolutely. In gold leaf. Yes. Story two. Sam Summers was sitting at home with his penis wrapped in an internet-connected chastity cage. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. So, so hang on. But I'm just going to ease first, you first, in. No, I just want to sit there. I, I just want to. I just want to go with the wrapped, like uh, yeah, in, in, let's say engulfed, encompassed. Okay, all right, fair enough. Contained, right. still enclosed, still. Say that. Say it again for me. Sam Summers was sitting at home. That's not the important bit. Get to the important <laughs> bit. No, Sam Sam has a name, man. I don't care. And the fact that he was at home is actually quite relevant. Yeah. I go on. His penis is wrapped in an internet-connected chastity cage. Internet-connected chastity cage. When okay. he got a weird message on the app that connects to the device. Does, have, does it have a screen on the device where it gets I notifications his phone. on his phone? I mean, when you got your dick in a chastity I, I belt, you've got your phone nearby. I want my notifications on my chastity belt. On your dick uh, device? I'm, yeah, that has a screen, but it's on the underneath, so it's very hard to see. You get to lean down. All right. <laughs> Wrap your head around. Um, someone had told Sam that they'd taken control and they wanted $1,000 in Bitcoin to give control back to him. Cool, cool, cool. Nothing wrong with that. Now, can I just... Uh, um, I know this is jumping ahead a little bit. Go ahead. And it's just something I've worried about, wondered about with the, the, the chastity belt scenario. A friend of yours, how, right? Uh, no, see, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with bolt cutters. Uh, yeah. How irremovable is this thing? Oh, we'll get to that. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. All so right. I should mention, this, this comes from a Vice article called, <clears throat> We spoke to a guy who got his dick locked in a cage by a hacker. Yeah. <laughs> Does what it says on the tin. So again, I'm thinking there's nothing here relevant to Adam. And in, in, in my defence, or rather in Adam's, this is when we were having a chat over a beer a mm. couple of weeks ago, and he said, have you heard the story about, and I was like, dude, you're coming on the podcast. Yeah, and, and you actually, because I was telling you a very exciting, interesting yeah. story, that got completely sidelined. Entirely. Like, oh my God, internet connected chastity belt. Well, we have to, we have know, to talk about why, why wouldn't you connect your chastity belt to the internet? And it's fair to say, Maybe it's not that you were boring, boring, but my fucking God, this is interesting. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So initially, <coughs> Sam says, I thought it was my partner doing it. Um, he told Motherboard in a phone call. It sounds silly, but I got a bit excited. Oh, no doubt. Oh, that, uh, I, I get it. Like, I Which, get, I get of course it. you do. This is, as, as far as I can understand, speaking for a friend here, yeah. this is why someone would actually want their uh, chastity device connected to the internet, so that that way there's some kind of remote sex play. There's control. Partner, whoever sits there and goes, okay, I've got you locked in So, th- so, there's, so there's two clear users for this. One, yes. One, yes. Uh, one being... User uh, and user. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, yeah. I meant... Yeah. I meant Wearer like, and controller. No, 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 no. Uh, I still meant... I, I meant in a, in, a, in, in a conservative we don't have sex sort of way, like a, a, a Christian well. grouping, yeah. or from uh, um, a sadomachism yeah. sort of world. Oh. Yeah, so there's, yeah, so yeah. there's two very different groups of users who may be... Do you know, I'm disappointed in myself because I never thought about the whole would actually use it as a chastity belt mm. like there, there was would, Kenneth there, Copeland going no, absolutely, Jesus, absolutely lock up my there penis would be, there would be people that want to lock up their penis from a, I, I, I don't want anything to do with sex sort of thing yep. or I don't want my, I don't trust my, my man I, yeah, exactly. I, it's so much yeah. worse if it's if it's not themselves so let's not even imagine mm. that but let's just say they, you know, they're, they're, mm. they're keeping themselves pure till marriage mm. so that group of people and another group of people who are maybe impure already and mm. are super impure and they're like I want, I want to make it 
make it fuck yeah. your judgment. So, what's impure? So there's the but the important thing is in the first scenario it has to be someone else because it's internet connected. If they were just wearing yeah. chastity belt and going okay, but the but yeah. the um like a lot of the sex slaves movement sort of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As in as in sorry, not just generic sex slaves, mm. but people who or enslave themselves exactly. with for for their um for their partner. Or the partner I, and I, I just, just, just want to um, ask, we want you, and you know this how. Huh? I read. I read. I read. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I like what, to. What can I, I say? I'm I like a curious read. guy. I like to read. Someone sends me a thing with words. I look <laughs> at the words. Exactly. So Summer's called his partner, and she told him it wasn't her. It's not me. Even after are he you told her on me? their safe are, word. Are you cheating on me? So he even said Spumoni, and she still couldn't do anything about it. Did you have to say it into the chastity belt? Like <laughs> <laughs> yelling at your cock. Mm. For fuck's sake, let me out. Um, that's when he realized he'd gotten hacked. His dick was sorry. Penis, we're being sciencey, was locked in the cage and he had no way out. Mm. How cool is that, huh? How relaxing. Well, why, yeah. no, why, why are you? Why are you sitting off. differently, Will? Welcome Bolt cutters. Bolt. I, I just. I just. Everyone's like, "Oh, he's stuck on an internet. We can't undo the computer dick connector." How it's tight like, is it? Yes, you can. <laughs> How tight I, is it? I can't imagine a thing that you cannot get off your body with, with, without, without some bolt sort of, so I've got a lot of stuff in my shed, <laughs> and I can get stuff off. So I've, I've got my hand up here for yeah, those who say, were... <laughs> Adam has his hand up. <laughs> who were, uh, so there was, the, there was this time... Not on the camera. The, no, um, you do realise that bolt cutters and especially kind of external genitals, they're not really a good mix. Uh, so you said, okay, I'm going to snip off the whole chastity belt. Oops, a daisy, there goes my junk. I've so uh, I, I, one look, has to be okay, careful okay. with the bolt unless, cutters. Unless there's some sort of anti-cutting anti, anti mm. cutting device that, that puts prongs in to yeah, hurt you no, or no, something like that. No, 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 there's dogs. There's wild dogs that come with it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm... I'm not fully It depends on the, 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 the physical makeup of the chastity belt, of course. Okay. Of yeah. Course. yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. it does. I'm just... I'm just look, uh, I'm you're, you're, you're seeing I'm, it more as a belt as uh, opposed to a... a no, I'm imagining, I'm imagining a glorified pair of undies. I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm, imagining, yeah. I'm imagining steel undies. Oh, that, it's so nice uh, in your world. Internet connected steel undies. Yep. And, and I'm just thinking... <laughs> as know, opposed to dick cage. Uh, sure. To be fair, dick and balls sure, cage. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, I, just, I just... Do you want to see a picture? Look it up on your phone. <laughs> I started. Again. I started to look at it at oh, work, yeah. and then I thought, "Oh, that's right. Whoopsie. I'm at work." Yep. So Summers says, mm. "Oh shit, it's real." After his uh, partner said, "No, the safe word won't work because I didn't do it." I started looking at the thing. There's no manual override at all. It's a chastity belt. I guess it kind of shouldn't have an override. But when it's a digital thing like that, it should have a key or something. Obviously, it didn't. It should have a manual override, like because yeah, it doesn't. Surely, a chastity belt, it, 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 even in the even in the traditional. You're sense... You're not committed. Oh, no, all I'm saying, even in the traditional sense of a chastity belt, you have to stay chaste until marriage. There, there's a there's an out. Like you get it, someone's got a key. There's you, a lot. You, no, you, get, you stay you chaste until your partner comes back from the crusades no, and is ready to have the intercourse. I, I don't with think you it's again. a chaste forever thing. I well, maybe it is. No, yeah. until your partner comes back from the crusades. And they have the key, a manual override. Yeah. Manual override. Yeah, anyway, so this one doesn't have that. So he started freaking out and like, basically panicking. So apparently Summers is one of several people who purchased a chastity cage from, uh, and the device is called Cellmate. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean S-E-L. I know, I know. Can you imagine that? Like, we're going to sell you a thing called Cellmate, lock your dick in it and relinquish control. No, and put it on the internet. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna That's connect it. Yeah, and, and, and also Back when the story online. goes public, can yeah. we have your name, please? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming he's not of the the group that we were discussing before, which is all about the kind of virgin chaste movement. Do we I, know? I've got the yeah. suspicion that he's more of the the kind of dirty S and M. Well, yeah, uh, this do, dirty man enjoys. Do, it. Do, do we know? Do we know? Oh, no, not, he's, not he's an enjoyer. He's okay. an enjoyer. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, like you said, it's a bit turned safe on. Word. Yeah, safe word. Yeah. And a bit turned on. Yeah. So that would suggest he's... The Mormons oh, yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. safe no, words. Okay, yeah, the yeah. bit turned on where he was saying, uh, yeah. my partner might have done this yeah. as a... Yeah. 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 Mormons don't have safe words other than Jesus. How do we know? Did you say he was Mormon? No, I didn't. He's not a safe word. That's what I mean. He's not a Mormon. Therefore, he has a safe word. Yeah, yeah. I keep up. <laughs> Tony story too. So it's produced by a company, a China-based manufacturer called Qi or Qi, Q-I-U-I. My apologies for my terrible Chinese accent. Some of the device's owners got their accounts and thus their devices as well hacked at the end of a couple That's of years. That's the before. problem. That's the problem. Because, you know, in yeah. some senses, and I know Adam's going to frown at me here, I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I trust big tech. I'm like, okay, if, if, no, the, that's a, fair point. if, if yep. a huge corporation is, is making this, then they got a whole bunch of users and they got a whole bunch of ethics Surely. departments and legal you departments and all that kind yep. of shit. Yep. Whereas if you're buying your chastity belt yeah. from some yahoos who, you know, there might be five people running a little factory somewhere. Chase ball belts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I just feel 
feel that they may not have the same level level of ethical legal considerations or the cyber security skills that no they doubt needed. no doubt exactly. that's the thing and that's the thing so I we s- should trust Xi the China no, I'm just saying wait until wait until Apple make a chastity belt and then I'm then I'll be oh they make one not that interested but I would buy that uh-huh. one not uh-huh. not the, not the uh-huh. Q one uh-huh. disclaimers noted mm. um, so what about Samsung. Uh, see, I'm, I see. I I've never bought Samsung stuff. I'm no. I'm not. You know. What's your TV? I have my tech loyalty. What's your TV? LG. Yeah. So what about LG? Lucky uh, Gold Star. I, I really don't like their the, remote. It's really bad. It's no. Key. And that's a problem with your chastity belt. Um, the reason I'm asking <laughs> asking about them is a number of these companies. I'm pretty sure Samsung, LG, and a few others. I might have them wrong, but a lot of the big name um, smart TV companies were busted a couple of years ago for having their smart TV uh, cameras remotely yes. accessible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And microphones remotely accessible. Microphones, they were listening yeah, to us all. Yeah. And also a bit of watching as well, depending on the on the brand. Just just, just, just a little bit of watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Honour, Your Honour, <laughs> just a little just bit. I was casually bit. watching exactly. them watching just TV. Bit, it's like Gogglebox, only it's for me. <laughs> exactly. What the so fuck's the, wrong? The point being that these companies, just because they're a big... Bigger company. No, no. I, I, mm. yeah. I have no belief that yeah, yeah. just because they're big, they're good. Not at all. I just, I just mm. think that uh, super complex area, mm. um, big. You mean the penis and balls? Well, mm. no, no. Su- super complex ethical, area. And, and, mm. and this is a totally different example. But I, I've got a, I've got um, a politi- target for example. No, no, no. It's, just <laughs> gonna, it's a totally different ethical, ethical example. But uh, 10, 15 years ago, Northern Territory uh, uh, did the euthanasia laws, yep. and. I think, and this is not against euthanasia at all, although I think it's a complicated uh, thing that a, a government would decide to do. Uh, I felt that potentially Northern Territory may not have the level of ethical, legal mm. discussion required to really bring that to bear in a sensible way. Uh, whereas a, a bigger state, I do feel like at least you have a body of experts and a body of civil civil uh, discourse that can discuss it a lot better. Now against the Northern Territory, mm. love you up there. You're great. You're, You're comparing great. them to China right now. You're right? great. You're great. Love you. I just think sometimes sometimes bigger can do the complicated better. Doesn't mean they will do the complicated better. Yep, this is true. So anyway, Summers, right? There you go. Our mate with his dick in a box. He said he was scared and a bit desperate. He realised he had some Bitcoin stashed in an old account, so he sec- sent the hacker what they wanted. Just got to say, just got okay. Yeah. The, the, you don't keep I, it in. No, the it's it's the it's the you're a groin cage dude, and you got the Bitcoin. Of course Bitcoin. you do. This is what I'm imagining all Bitcoin dudes are though. Like this is <laughs> yeah, this I got is my dick in a box. No, and they're, all just, they're all just Bitcoin. shuffling their Bitcoin around so they can pay for their dick between cages. hackers. Yeah, exactly. It's. <laughs> <laughs> this this is true. literally how Bitcoin I Bitcoin is only for blackmail and buying Elon Musk's latest car. I think you can buy it without Which Bitcoin. is essentially a large dick cage. That's true. Yep. Luckily I have a large <laughs> dick. Uh, <laughs> hey. Um so um That was really bad. You said, like, I, I shouldn't do that. Like that's a that's a very dated joke, man. I, I am dated. Okay, all right. I'm like in my fifties. That's old. So he sent them the money, hoping that would be it. <laughs> Problem solved. Turns Done out, dusted. You know, you're going to be shocked to hear this. So the hacker got the money, and then they asked for more. Really? I'm shocked. This Which, is the no, first time. no, no, no. As we spoke to me many, many months first ago time. in an earlier episode of the Wholesome Show, one of the one of the key things that hackers will attempt to do is provide trust. That uh, that once once you have been hacked, they want you to trust that you pay the Bitcoin, you yeah. you, you get that. And back. then they so say, "Give me more." I'm and actually trust surprised. Broken. I'm actually surprised. No, that's that's. That's not actually used. So usual. had they released him at this point? No. Nope. Was he so? Nope. He said, "Here's the Bitcoin." They said, "I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine no. them releasing him and then now say, give, give us, us more money." <laughs> Hang on a minute. We're not as we're not as strong in the bargaining <laughs> no, right he, now. <laughs> Something made, wrong put with your dick back in. Yeah, yeah. Put your dick back in. We need a little bit more. <laughs> I got a mortgage to pay. Can you? Can you? Then, <laughs> my then, partner's really then angry with me. Give us some more Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he's gone a couple of days later. Actually, that was pretty hot. I'm going to get back in the cage. Oh, the hacker element makes it even better. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it could be. It keep, could be. Keep and, talking, and, they, keep and, talking. And, and, and here's the thing. Yeah. Here's, here's the the new yeah. the new version of sex, where instead of you know you and your partner, you and swingers, whatever mm. it is, mm. but now it's you, your partner, and, and a hacker. hacker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So would that be called hacking off? Aye. 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 So um, they didn't. They asked for more money, and uh, according to Summers, that's when I felt fucking stupid and angry. <laughs> So at that point, Summers and his partners started to brainstorm ways to Bolt get his dick out of the cage. Oh, hang on. No, no. So, wait. So, wait, wait. Okay. We're on to it. I, I've just got to say, in yeah. terms of your strategies here, yeah. uh, 
I, I, They're not my strategies, man. I, I am brainstorming. Sam I am brainstorming ways to ways to do this before I pay the hackers. Before anything else. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just. First things first. How do I get out of this? Yeah, yep. exactly. I'm thinking acid. Or do acid. So um, a lot of yeah. olive oil. I feel yeah, like if, if that happens while you're on acid, I mean, come on, man, really. Oh wow. Yeah. Or did it happen? So mm. th- here's what I love now. At his house, he and his partner only had a hammer. So they went out and bought a pair of bolt cutters. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Also, let's let's be clear. I love the the pronoun is they went out. So <laughs> he's done. He's got a wheelbarrow. A I, I assume sling. you can put. I assume you can put your trousers on over the top of this. Uh, I don't know. I've got a lot of junk to cover. Uh, his partner tried first. They couldn't break through. So Summers had to do it himself. And it says here the way he was holding his penis put it quote in a dangerous spot. So he said it was very scary. Nonetheless, he was able to break the cage, but the cutters still cut him. I don't have a scar or anything, but I was bleeding and it fucking hurt. All right, no, I just got to say, I just got to say, I'm just going to guess based on him only having a, a hammer in the house, mm. his his uh, his tool use skills are not as high as they not be. not honed. I you know, no, I only go have down a hammer. to your local tradie. Yeah. Like you like you like a metal metal work guy. Look, go do, you like need, a, do you need carpentry go, or plumbing? Go, no, what go, I need. Go right? to like a year year ten shop B class. You know the metal work, metal work class. They'll be like, I got okay, some metal kids. work. Okay, okay, what you got to do is remove this bit of metal no, it starts from like my dong. I, I got a five minute job, but it's going to take forty five minutes because forty minutes is laughing, <laughs> and then I you just get feel, on with it. I just yeah, okay. They they sound less competent in. This so manner. he broke it and okay, he cut good. himself, and so because of the cut, someone as his partner were not able to have sex for over a month. The the. The incident also made him reconsider using internet-connected devices, <laughs> especially those that go around your bits and pieces. <laughs> so, um, there's so he's that. learned a valuable lesson. Then, exactly. Is what you're saying. Like, he's learned I mean, his lesson. Who would have thought of that on their own? If you're going to put your junk in something, um, try to have if and if it is going to be internet-connected, try and have some minimum security, some minimum cyber security. That's all there are. So why is that an issue ethically? I mean, I don't see it. And I mean, internet. This is not the Internet of Things. Mm. This is the Internet of shit we're dealing with yeah. here. This so is where that was dug I, up. I think on that, like the ethic stuff is pretty obvious and easy, as in hacking is unethical. Yeah, grabbing someone, like uh, essentially kidnapping someone or holding them to ransom. Yeah. Bad. Where the things become interesting is how you assign responsibility, particularly to the guy with his junk and the thing. So if, uh. if we sit there and go, why the hell would you do this? But he bought this product and it was advertised and marketed saying, this is completely safe. Yep. This is a super work as intended. Safe. Mm. Exactly. Work as intended. There's no way anyone can hack it. Then it seems that he ought to be held less responsible if in any way. Surely the, com- the, the yeah. key company exactly. should be paying for the bolt cutters at least. Yep. Or something. Yep. Yeah. And maybe a nice some, pair too. some kind of trauma, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Some kind of trauma, mm. for example. Yeah, for example. I'm not seeing it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the the thing there is it's easy to assign responsibility to him and go, oh, well, you're an idiot. Why you're an idiot. You yeah, sure. dick in something dumb. Yeah, right. But, again, if you know either people aren't aware of the cybersecurity challenges of these things or it's being marketed as totally safe, then, well, now they're less culpable, if any way culpable at all, and it's the company who... To my mind, probably bear the response the majority for And to be fair, if it's unless consent is <coughs> breached, you're allowed to put your dick in something dumb. Sure. Uh like, d- just just okay. slow down you on can. the dump. Uh, j- yes. Oh, not dumb too judgy? Uh, no. In no, whatever you just, want. Just just not not all no, you're not allowed to put your dick in whatever you want. Uh, as, as long as consent's not the, the, an issue. The, the, yeah, as long as consent there we go. Let's yeah. just let's just put I that down. I there. said that. He said that. Yeah. He did inanimate objects. He doesn't hear me. Inanimate objects, you know, it's your it's there you go. Then it depends on where they are. If you're at home, cool. Yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. the boss's office. Yeah, sure. Then, for example, for example, for, for a random example, of, yeah, just yeah, completely yeah, off, yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. See, that would make the story. I mean, just to, just a shift, <laughs> shift podcast for a little bit here. But in terms of uh, uh, international listeners, Australia has gone through a weird moment yes. where uh, we have discovered that uh, in our Parliament House there is a whole bunch of people masturbating on things. I was going to say wanking, but mm. that could be people could the say, bombs "Oh, they're, ju- they're just they're just wanking." That means mm. they're being idiots. No, 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 they're they're literally masturbating. But but a lot of it is really terrible stuff. Mm. Uh, but uh, maybe maybe this is the addition: chastity mm. belts. Well, maybe these guys. Chastity. Welcome to the Liberal Party. Yeah, maybe these guys needed chastity belts to stop them, you know, cranking one out in the office. Here's the other problem, though. The people who would be so inclined when you put the belt on might issue forth anyway because <laughs> that's what they're into. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Number three. Let's, let's, let's dial it up. I'm with you, listener. I'm sighing. 
deep inside me. So this, deep, so here's, deep here's inside my, these, were the, these were the easy, nice kind of ethical issues. Yeah. Here. So yeah, now, now we're getting to the don't flag it too much. Mm. Here, here's a topic that everyone's talking about, and by everyone I mean this is this is going to be like few. is it is it unethical or not to be Hitler or something? I'm like I know it's unethical. No, I know, yeah, I know. So, okay, okay, you're right. You're exactly right. This is inspired by the chap- a chapter from a book, the Oxford Handbook of Digital Ethics, called "The Ethics of Sex Robots." Oh, of course. Mm. It's 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 by two guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them their names because I found it on Twitter and I follow one of these people and it was very interesting to read. So a guy called Axel Branen Sturdy and the dude I follow, Brian D. Earp. Oh, yeah. So all I'm gonna do is is just read their intro as a kickoff for a little chatty poo. Yep. Will you look worried? It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Um, and then we're going to basically, you know, rely on Adam to make us better people <laughs> or not. Yep. So in the, no in the intro to this chapter, they note some ethical worries about sex box bots relate to scenarios that might never happen, like the Westworld example where there are totally sentient, extreme forms of cruelty. Okay, so so actually sentient. Se- sentient okay. robots that are basically raped and they're, they, they're basically indistinguishable from humans. They but, have but life goals. To, indi- indistinguishable from humans, but forced to, to be in position. To, yeah. yes. okay. Sure. But in their chapter, let's keep it simple. Their chapter, they assume the sex bots of the future will be non-sentient yep. and not yep. have a moral standing. Yep. So they'll be neither moral victims nor moral agents. I'm quoting them here. Yep. I'm quoting them in bits and pieces. So they assume that sex bots are, in air quotes, mere machines that are reliably identifiable as such, despite they may have human-like appearances and behaviours. So you know that you're having sex with the sex bot. It's definitely a machine, yeah, of some description. So So just slow for a second here. What's the reliable identifier? You've got to make them Mm. them believe. Barcode on the forehead. Yeah, that's not enough. That's Dead sorry. eyes. Uh, again, not an eye. Again, not an eye. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that, I mean, that would be open to interpretation, but it would be, by mm. definition, a reliable identifier. So that people go, okay, yeah, this is a human, this is a sex bot, this and we not, can easily yeah. distinguish between the two. Yeah, I, 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 well, yeah. I just think that reliable mm. identifiers are, are problematic. That in itself is is yeah. not actually as simple as we might yep. think. This uh, is true. If, if uh, we're deliberately yeah. making something that is indistinguishable from a human, you know, yeah. it, uh, in every other mm. way, and then, yeah. oh, no, there'll be a reliable identifier. It's like, mm. They're going to wear a hat that says sex bot. Yeah, again, that's not enough. Like, no, the hat's really cause, well Because guaranteed... Like there's a strap under the chin. Guaranteed, the instant there's a hat that go, with a strap under the chin that says sex bot, some, some hipster is going to wear it. And you'll be like, no. Oh, I'm fuck st- yeah, they are. <laughs> exactly. This is descending. Oh, I wish I had a picture of that. i got a really big beard and a hat that says sex bot. But I'm not a sex bot. <laughs> So they basically say, under the stipulations that they lay down for yep. that chapter, sex bots are, can no more be harmed, morally speaking, than your dishwasher. Okay, cool. Yep, and you're Matt, you're allowed to destroy your dishwasher if you want. Oh, we'll yep. destroy it however you want, and I've got a meal in. Okay, so we're not talking about that yummy. kind of no. sentience problem. Yep. No. So they're going to suggest there could still be something wrong about the production, distribution, etc., of such sex bots. So what's a sex bot for their definition? A sex bot is a robot that is designed and manufactured primarily for the purpose of being used for sexual gratification. I think we're all with them so far. There are four particular features. One, they are shaped like human beings and have human-like appearances, which distinguishes them from things like sex toys, vibrators, fleshlights, dildos, all things none of us have ever heard of. Two, they move in ways that are relevant for sexual interactions of various kinds. So the ability to move and interact with users sets them apart from a sex doll. Mm -hmm. They actually interact. They are embodied rather than, say, for example, a holograph. So embodiment sets them apart from a virtual reality sex interaction. And they have artificial intelligence of a sufficiently sophisticated level to allow the user to communicate with the robot, at least in a rudimentary way. For the sapiosexuals that are turned on by the mind. They're really really smart. I love this robot for its brain. Mind. It's not not the body, it's the mind. Exactly. You're so silicon right now. (laughs) So they say there are, this this is their, basically, that's their definition. So we're already into a world where we're like, cool. Uh, just, just on the virtual reality thing, I mm. think that doesn't actually answer some of the. I, I'm just guessing some mm. of the ethical quandaries were coming we'll up remain. here. Yep. I, I, I mm. the, the physical or virtual. Yeah. I, I still think that 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 yeah, problem embodied is or not, whatever. Yeah. Yep. yep. I, so they say there are three types of sex bots that have received the most attention in the ethics literature, and you may or may not be able to confirm this. One, I'll put this as kindly as I can. Mm. The female sex bot with features that are stereotypical of mainstream porn. So the, the, the sex dolls that are currently on the market mirror, as one author put it, a strong Eurocentric male gaze. 
such that, quote, their design takes semantic coding and stereotyping along hegemonic gender lines to the extreme basic reducing robot companions to large-breasted Barbie dolls yep. with glimpses of artificial intelligence. Okay. So there's a prospect of doubling down on this gaze and associated attitudes and expectations okay. from porn, mm -hmm. which are widely believed to be harmful and misogynistic. And that's one of the leading worries that has been raised about sex bots. Oh, and, and porn as a... As a well, no, as porn's a, fine. No, but, but yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, porn yeah. setting up objectifying stereotypes of, of certain, yeah. certain ways of, of, of yeah. women and men should look. Yeah. yeah. So they're saying this, this, this is this first kind. So the concern is the attitudes and expectations so will be reinforced. Is, is there a parallel here then that uh, there's been the response from the amateur porn community to the, the professional porn community? Oh, no, they're terrible. <laughs> they, do, they do all these terrible stereotypes. Amateur porn is about more people. Is there the amateur porn uh, sex bot? We may get to this in point two. <laughs> Perhaps. Sorry, we may. If not, I will bring it up. So Good. Go ahead. No, no, you should. You go should. ahead, sir. Um, number two, the, the sex bot that has received, according to these authors, the most attention is designed to, and I'll quote, there are other words I could have used, but I won't, they're quote, simulate resistance to sexual advances and a lack of consent. Yeah, nah. There's a lot of gaps in those lines to read yeah, between. Nah. So, for example, the rudimentary sex bot Roxy, with a triple X, um, comes with Why different personalities. Why do they have to give it that name? Anyway, Roxy was a triple X because it's cool. One of the personalities that you can put into Roxy, so to speak, is called Frigid Farrah. Mm. It's described by the manufacturer as an entity that is, quote, very reserved and does not always like to engage in intimate activities. Jesus fuck. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So it's been argued that they could be used to satisfy I, rape fantasies, etc. Uh, now, this is um, ethicists thinking about these questions, not necessarily... Uh, this is ethicist, yeah. This yeah, is from ethicists. This is not yeah. necessarily tech people making these no, these no. sex bots. Not saying they don't. I'm not saying they don't, yeah. but this is just to this is more thinking yeah. about scenarios yeah. for problematic sex bots. Okay. Yeah. So this reminds me a little bit of a there was a thing I read years ago, and I'm I'm normally not shocked. I'm fairly dead inside. Um, good man. I know. Good, yeah. good, good as, man. As, yeah. as all professional ethicists exactly. should be. Exactly. And I was reading this thing about 10, 12 years ago. There was a computer game which was called Ray Play. Fuck me. Come and on. basically, it was a computer game. You ran around and you raped people, and you got more points for the more kind of egregious the rapes were. There was like really women, and the issues with that were I I couldn't even start. Like it was one of those things where I first started reading about, it and I went, "That is that shit is so deeply troubling." Can't do it anymore. Even think about I I don't want to enter my my brain, let alone my yeah, yeah. brain in it. And so this sounds very similar to that. So you know, yeah. you, know, you, you don't you don't need to engage deeply no. with your ethical brain. No. Like you can you can hear the title <laughs> yeah, exactly. and go no yeah. no no. But, but no. the yeah. literature just says no. <laughs> literature like, says like no. Socrates yeah. onwards no. Like now I may Socrates was very strong on sex. Boys. No, he had, he had he, a lot. He had he video games game. in general. Like he was a big video yeah, gamer. It's true. Like it's true. Gamer. Yeah. He nearly brought Nintendo down. Yeah. Um. Do you want me to start entering into the ethics of why this might be wrong? I'll get to the third one okay, and, then yep. and then 100% because the third one yep. is really... If you thought number two was bad. Oh, if you thought well, number well, two well, was well. bad, you're going to you're gonna wish for number so, two. So hang on. So, so what have we got so far? Number one was... Uh, Iconic uh, porn imagery, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number so, two is not keen on yep. playing with you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then number three... Number three and is... Remember, and remember the point being that these are otherwise... Of the um, the capacity of a dishwasher. Dishwasher like this, status. This, this is, yeah, exactly. You might yep. want to open the, those beers there, yep. William. Uh, Number three mm. is, and we've no, I've talked about this with engineering students because they think ethics doesn't apply to them. Mm. Uh, the sex bot that's designed to look like a prepubescent child. Now, this has been proposed by people in Nature and Science magazine and others as an idea. They say in theory that these are in a crude form available in production in Japan. And some have argued this is because they could be used ethically to stop people exactly. pedophiling. And, but others are, of course, concerned that maybe it would encourage people to pedophile. Um, so, uh, it, look, I'm, as I said up front, this is not a pleasant topic. However, it needs talking about because mm. this is going on. This yep. is actually happening. And so there have been people, I think there's one guy in the UK, one guy in Canada who mm. have been charged and I think found guilty of importing uh, these childlike uh, sex robots. Yeah. And there basically, there were some existing laws or some laws were written such that these guys could be could be charged with offences. And then the, the question uh, is... Yeah, what are the offences? What are the... What's the I, I don't know the law on this, yeah, funnily yeah. enough. But, you know, the, the question is, as a lot of people 
put on these things. It's like, yeah, but if it's not a thing, like you know, if it, if if this is a nonsense, it's a dishwasher. Thing, yeah, it's a dishwasher. What is wrong with that? Yep. And yep. you know, you sit there and go, your immediate response is that shit's just fucking horrible. Yeah, that's reprehensible. What is wrong with you? Yep. And right. then you hear the let's say uh, slightly sophisticated argument. Yes, but this will help these people. You know, if yep. well, well, if if there's mm. evidence, if there's evidence on that, exactly. Like, like but I don't even agree no. to that net yet necessarily yet, no. but. Is there evidence? So imagine that that means yep. though, and I agree with you, but mm. you have to be able to gather evidence. No, exactly. And that is a and fucked a up situation. Yep. And then you imagine that Adam and I sit mm. on the university's uh, ethics, ethics committee, oh and I'm God. trying to imagine that protocol hitting us because I mean I find the oh ethics God. committee very interesting mm. um, in all kinds of ways, but yeah. the idea that something like this would hit us yeah. is not impossible. No, no, no. And some well-meaning, like, very well-meaning, and possibly, arguably, very important research. You're like, yeah, no, there's. No. But then, yeah. so the counter argument to that stuff is, and because uh, actually I have a, a couple of friends who they run or ran the Foundation for Responsible Robotics. And uh. they released a report on the ethics of sex robots. This was a, in 2017. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was huge. They had heaps and heaps of coverage, mostly because mm. they had a, a bit on childlike sex robots. Right. And so I that got heaps and heaps and heaps of coverage. And heaps of people like, yeah, but you know, again, what's wrong with that? You know, it's just the same as a dishwasher. Uh. And if it can help people, blah, blah, blah. At the time, what I was saying to them is, and I don't know if this is true, you know, some people might, um, there'll be people out there who know more than this, uh, know more about this than me, but two of the arguments are that, first of all, it normalises this problematic yeah. behaviour. Yeah, 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 yes. The, the yeah. kind of non-consensual robot. Similar to that first scenario yep. of normali normalising how, how, uh, how people should look. Exactly. So, yep. Yep. so you sit there and go, that's, that's really bad. Like, yeah. Absolutely. That's obviously problematic. Yep. The second thing is, and I think this, you know, I was kind of speculating with, with my colleagues a couple of years ago about this, is those sorts of robots can be used for grooming practices. Mm. So as mm. far as I understand it, um, some uh, pedophiles will use child pornography to groom kids and say, look at this, look what these guys are doing. It's all fine. Yeah, this is all yeah. fine and normal. So these are the reasons why even if no immediate person is harmed because it's the same as a dishwasher, there are really strong reasons to be concerned Third thing is a kind of basic. Um, well, is there is there a parallel, a, an mm. older pr parallel potentially with uh, drawings, like yeah. like art, art? Yeah, exactly. Uh. That, uh, yeah, so so non, so this goes to the virtual stuff. non non photographed art, mm. but uh, yeah. where you've got where you've got drawings of child pornography yeah. type stuff that I assume are well. Mm. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna guess touch a lot of these ethical issues, but also illegal in the same way. So there is a yeah. historical precedent for saying mm. this is yeah. opening doors here. Exactly. This is bad. This is problematic. And people have used these arguments. And again, I, I think I was reading this stuff about 10, 15 years ago, yeah. saying, well, this is why we ought to be concerned about things like virtual pornography, which mm. has kids or child-looking yep. things in it. Because you go, well, this, again, it normalises the behaviour, can be used in grooming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the reasons why we ought to be quite concerned about this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, I, I don't want to play devil's mm. advocate on this. I, I think... No, I think, no, yeah, I no, think, no, I think, no, 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 yeah. no I, don't, mm. I don't want to, but... Yeah. Uh, in in controlled scenarios, mm. you know, in the sense that uh, we we worry about normalizing a mm. whole lot of stuff: yeah, yeah. Uh, smoking, yeah. uh, underage drinking, uh, podcasting. Hang, podcasting you shouldn't normalize that. Jesus Christ, not, not ever. Uh, hanging on the outside of trains, all mm. sorts of things that are that are bad behaviors yeah. that we don't want to normalize. Mm. Yeah. And so we use a variety of tools uh, to make it uh, either frowned upon mm. or. Uh, regulated so that only certain groups of people yep. can do it or in certain scenarios. Yep. So mm. here's here's the scenario where, where you say, okay, is this something that we say... A it, therapist might have as a tool. So you put, it, put a yeah. cage around it, so to speak, and say, okay, mm. here, okay, everywhere else, no. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, that's I mean, speculation. I mean, mm. well, yeah. here, I, in general, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the person that sort of leans towards regulation rather than prohibition like like for so many questions i mean yeah, i'll yeah, ask yeah. you rod yeah. you know on on uh drugs or something like that like, as in like uh recreational drugs mm -hmm. so many places where regulation making a, a legitimate market where you can control it and you can yeah, govern yeah, it yeah, and yeah. you can say who can do things where they can do them where they can't do them and and being far more nuanced on the whole situation yeah. uh gives you gives you a much better long-term outcome for society so so you can make that argument about say yeah. for example well we're doing it now with tobacco mm -hmm. we're regulating it we're getting we're saying okay you can't make heaps and heaps of money out of it uh obviously kids can't smoke but now the the place where grown-ups can smoke is far less. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think we'll ever get to a prohibition of, of smoking. Similarly, you could do that with uh, with other drugs, with weed or something like that. 
what is the parallel here? Because I, I feel like that's a good question. I feel like regulation yeah. rather than prohibition does point to some sort of future, yep. but uh, but this is this is horrible. Well, one, mean, th- one thing's for sure is it won't go away on its own. Some yeah. version of this behavioural yep. desire will not go away on its own. Yep. Oh, and given that, I mean, aside from the the physical nature of the the sex bot, you could imagine, you know, like the the games and stuff like that. I mean, it, it is oh, th- they are distributed, they are shared, they are passed around, mm-hmm. and yeah. I don't want to regulate anything like that, mm. other than saying no. But yeah. as as the science part of me says, should we find out what is the best way to deal with this? If only we had an ethicist. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, we, <laughs> we do. So, the, I mean, the regulation thing is actually, it is a really interesting angle because I'm thinking like some scenarios where you have someone who, let's say they have been diagnosed with some pedophilic... Um, mm-hmm. Proclivities. Proclivities, yeah, exactly. Sure. And they're like, actually, I need help for this. Sure, as as there are people exactly. that, that yeah. maybe that, that come... They don't act that, on it. They, they, they come forward it. before, exactly. before yeah. they've ever, yep. ever harmed anyone. Yeah, exactly. And that's like a lot of people find even that very notion distressing. Um, of course. But... But we're, but, but we're like yeah. scientists we're and scientists. so we can handle that. Yes. The question, and like, and this is where it is really, really hard. The question is, okay, let, let's, let's imagine some scenario where the therapist uses um, one of these childlike uh, sex robots yep. as a, a tool of therapy for this, for this mm-hmm. person. Uh, you sit there and go, okay, that seems to be mitigating a whole lot of harms. It's very regulated. It's very constrained, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's for good ends and good purposes. Mm. The worry or concern is, again, um, and I don't know how we would get research onto this, but would that seek, uh, would that end up normalizing the person's behavior for yeah. them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for them in exactly. particular, you know, you can think about that individual scenario. They exactly. they haven't they haven't they haven't harmed anyone. They're yeah. like, I need help. Can I come forward? Mm. And their therapist says, Okay, mm. what you got to do is have sex with them. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa! That's yeah, exactly. that's blowing my. You know, what, you know, you you got to co-design um, a research project with some pedophiles. Mm. How, how hard could it be? Oh. Can you so, imagine that? Who wants to do this? No. Another I, I, scenario, I which I thought you might touch on with the... With I'm not that well um, read. <laughs> a variant on the, the first scenario. So, yeah. you know, there's this yeah. concern about normalising certain, you know, physical stereotypes. Et Barbies, etc. Et um, yeah. One of the other kind of variants on that, and I'd, I'd like to see your guys' take on this, is I think there is some capacity for people to have sex to- uh, these sex robots made to order. And can mm. you then make it look like anyone you want? Yeah, oh, yeah, like a yeah, like yeah. like a celebrity, celebrity or an ex. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And that. So then you sit uh. there and go like again, you know, because the in theory the same the same arguments hold as, as before. Like, oh well, you know, it's not involving them. It's not. But has them. that other person consented? Yeah, exactly. exactly. My dishwasher looks yep. like Gal Gadot. That's fine. But mm. but but, yeah. but mm. well, there you go. I mean, that you Is know, that okay? the, the, we're not allowed to use someone's likeness in a in a film or a movie without their consent. Exactly. So, and can you name the film that that was based on and the actor who caused that? Yes, of course I can. Go. No, no, not now. No, 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 no later. Her. Later. Um, so she. it was uh, Back to the Future Two, I believe. Oh my god! Oh, I remember seeing Glover. that. No way. Crispin Glover, as if, and I'm, I'm trying to remember this. Crispin Glover was in Back to the Future as Bill yeah. McFly's dad. Yep. He then had some issues with the contract in Back to the Future Two. He then had a long protracted legal case and said that they couldn't use his likeness in any future Back to the Future films. And then that actually set a precedent for people. Of oh, CGIing people, yeah, 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 and this was back in when that was the that's the awesome, 80s. exactly. And Back to the Future, mind blowing series. I'm sorry, but oh but come on, I, come on. I, yeah. I, I think I think you know how you know how kids watch movies over and over and over again. Back to the Future. So so do adults. <laughs> no, 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 different different levels. So do yeah. adults. Yeah. But uh, Back to the Future might be. I know Jupiter Ascending. You've you've watched that dozens of times. Fuck the visuals. <laughs> but, the visuals. But Back to the Future. I watched yep. many, many, yep. many, 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 many times. So calling yourself a kid. Rewatch, I think it's Back to the Future 2 and see, like, they've got some weird things that look like Crispin Glover, but they're not. Wow. Awesome. And so, yeah. yeah. And I didn't so realise that. Look that up. So, but then, the, you know, this goes back to this thing of the likeness thing. Yeah. So then the ethical question is, well, what's wrong with using the likeness against yeah. them? Especially if they don't know and they're not harmed in any physical that, way. That, that classical, if they don't, what they don't know can't hurt them. Exactly. It's like, yes, that's true, mm. but... F- so the, mm. the kind of the ethics arguments or ethics position there is, it's 
about kind of uh, basic human respect. And if this person, uh, this is what informed consent does, it says, well, we're showing that we respect you as a person and we would ask you whether it's okay to make a sex doll that looks like you. And if you say no, then bang, you can't do that. And it's... It seriously, if I had a dollar for the number of emails I received saying that... Yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd, I'd be a yeah, wealthy they man. don't count if you're sending them to yourself. Right, Damn can it. I get a sex doll that looks like you? Do you mind? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah, like, it is a really interesting thing to sit there and mm. go, okay, well, what is it that we actually care about here? And some of it is yeah. about, you know, the actual likelihood of... Uh, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that a... Mm a solid ethical place to argue in terms of respect for other people. I mean, cause mm. that's an interesting place. I mean, mm. it's not, it's not in terms of harms to mm. a, committed to another person or harms to committed to society in mm. general. Um, but that we should have a, have a respect for each other, which I, I don't, I don't disagree yeah, with as a human. Yeah. I, I totally, I totally don't. agree with it, yeah. but, no. but I'm just trying to understand so the ethical underpinnings. I of would, that. I generally see that as a form of the kind of Kantian school of ethics, you know, his categorical. Oh, look, I was just going to say that, but no, what's, sure, what's your sure, take? Sure, what's sure, your yeah. take? <laughs> the, uh, uh, Kantian categorical imperative, which says you should always uh, treat someone as an end in themselves, never as a means. Yeah, and uh, so okay. this is a similar thing. I like, and then that that Kantian categorical imperative generates a whole bunch of things that are usually um, uh, kind of connected to basic human rights. But the mm. way I like to think about it is basic respect. So it's respect for an individual okay. or a group or etc. How yeah? How does that extend though? I mean, uh, mm. you know, and and I get in terms of yeah. we're talking about the likeness of someone. Mm. I can I can understand that treat them as a an end of themselves and, and therefore respect. But how does yep. that extend then to uh, animals, mm. dishwashers, animals? Well, animals is just the the, the middle path yep. through. So to on dishwashers. the I wasn't just going to jump to dishwashers, but on, on the like, standard yeah, Kantian okay. account. Um, it has to be some level of uh, the the target of that respect has to have some level of sentience, mm. and so that's I, what I thought. Animals, yeah. they would probably like you know that's the basic idea of animal rights. Mm. Yeah, more simple animals that have less developed neural systems that have less capacity for a sense of self, less capacity for themselves, uh, extending through time. They're probably you know lower on the on the list of things. Your dishwasher, probably none. No, so no, I have a meal. It's very, very, <laughs> very, very. But very it's really it, it, it is, yeah. it is cheating yeah. though, in some sense, mm. to say it's a dishwasher when mm. uh, what a sex bot programmer would be asking of a sex bot is not. Is not like it's true. They're not the same. It's really not. No, <laughs> it's not. not it's not. Press the button and go. <laughs> unless, unless, unless your sex bot can do the dishes for you. I, no, that's but not, it's, it's that's, why not? Yeah, but that's uh, some pretty bad gender norms there. It's terrible. It's I terrible. didn't say it was but, a female it, sex bot. My God, you're racist. <laughs> but it's it's almost like the uh, mm. sex is something deeper than just doing mm. the dishes. And, what? And whether or not it is it is mm. done by a, a human partner or something that is a sex bot partner? I I I, I think we're not able to get them down to. <laughs> so the, then, actually, then to there's the dishwasher the, level. The third uh, ethical yeah. aspect there is the standard virtue ethics stuff, which is it's actually about my character. So what does me oh, engaging cool. with the sex uh, bot yeah, say yeah. about my character, and how does that actually uh, uh, lead to negative or positive developments of my character? And if you know, on probably a whole bunch of. Uh, accounts about uh, sex. It's supposed to have something to do with romance, love, emotion, etc., etc., etc. What have you been reading? Rather than ah, uh, lots of books. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. The engagement with the the sex bot can um, enable and afford uh, poor character development. And even if I'm uh, kind of willing, in a uh, sense, uh, you know, if that on the kind of uh, Aristotelian virtue ethics thing that leads to a kind of negative character development for me, that's why we ought to be concerned about it. So therefore, mm -hmm. sex, sex, yep. sex bots are only for like the over 25s or something when they've had their ca character development Wasn't it was, No, that was um, mm. um, Jung who said you can't go to uni till you're 30. So mm. this is the same thing. Yeah, exactly. You can't get your sex bot till you're 30. Till you're 30. Simple. Till you've ruined your life, yeah. and then it's like, yeah, okay, fuck in, it up, game over. fine, yeah, exactly. you're done. Yeah. But after but between, 30, between, you can't mm, blame it on the sex. Between part. 80 and 18 and 30, you could be trying for the humans. After that, you can. You <laughs> so, so here's a question for you both. Now, uh -oh. I, I want to get. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm going to throw the shoe on the other hand here. Um, do you think it would be okay to have a sex bot? That is a childlike sex bot that looks like you did when you were a child for you to have sex with. Whoa. Jesus Christ, who asked that? Why the fuck would you ask that? <laughs> Why the fuck? <laughs> what the? F Jesus. I was, I was a very good looking child, but not in that way. 
this is this is obviously the paradox of time travel. But also, Martin. what about do, an, do, what about do you an do adult time travel to go back and have sex with yourself? What about no, an adult don't. version go of yourself? yourself. So yeah, you get exactly. a, an adult version an adult of version. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Go fuck yourself. Exactly. Oh look, I've been working out. That's mm. that's fine. Yeah. I'm okay with it. But no, no, Will's like, not. So you obviously had no a bit fucking of interest. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. You're talking no. about you right no, now, not no. me. And, no, no, this is literally on. no, no, no. I'm this taking is, my this shirt is, off. This is not a. This is not a. Oh, I can't. I can't get anywhere near a bloke. No, it's nothing like that. No, no. this is. Uh, you know, you're if, not if, into if, you. If, if there is a spectrum that that says between you know your interest in uh, people of the op- opposite sex and people of the same sex, and then there is Just off you. off that deep end, off the other end, yeah, I'm going yeah. way away over here. Yeah. Is 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 me. You haven't seen that movie? You're just not that into you? I am not into me. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus I Christ. can't imagine it. Like so, so what is wrong imagine. with that, though? Like, and I'm not saying that it, there isn't anything wrong with it, but you obviously had an immediate visual reaction there. You're going, that shit is... Because, because I am pristine. Yeah, I am pristine yeah, yeah, yeah. and my, I must be left alone. Do you know what? Deep down he knows he's fucking ugly. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Whatever. And, I as, just, and as a kid, oh even uglier. Yeah. You should so have seen his teeth. Why would you raise that? <laughs> well, no, no, no. Because no, this, this is actually where, uh, like, the the ethics becomes really interesting because you sit there and like the way I try and like I was saying earlier, it's one of the things is not to say, well, here's what's right and wrong. It's okay. You've got a response to a certain thing. What does that tell you about something? So it's a kind of little yeah, bit of moral yeah. psychology. And yeah, then yeah. the interesting thing is what is it particularly problematic about that? Like, you know, you've got, uh, sure, sure, sure. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is particular, mm. what, why, why is my gut and my head yeah, lining yeah. up? What is the thing? Yeah. You know, but, yep. but do you, do you ethicists mm. sit around going, okay, I gotta find the worst thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Why yeah, not? I, I have Why to, not? I have to sit here and I must find the worst. I've got a thought experiment right now. <laughs> exactly. Fuck, Adam's got a thought experiment. Yeah. I'm gonna go home. So yeah. you can, yeah. you're in a trolley ready. and yeah. you can murder yeah. eight people that way. Yeah. Or While fucking you have yourself. To, you have to yeah. find yourself. While fucking yourself. While fucking yourself. <laughs> Exactly. So, um, do you know what I really want? I want an old version of myself in a robot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like seventy. I, I want to see how I turn out. Yeah. No, see, I'm fine with that. I give it a cuddle. Like yeah. that's fine. We can hang out together. Hi, me. I'm, I'm, we're not having sex, but yeah. we're, we're, I was going to say it's yeah. going to be okay. But you already know that it was okay. Yeah. 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 Um, a lot of of oh, depends on the sort of ethics you do, but a uh, number of ethicists do engage in this kind of hypothetical mm. discussions. And okay, what about this? Let's imagine this scenario. You've got to choose between killing a I don't know, child soldier and a five normal soldiers or something like that. Sure, sure. Um, I'd kill all six of them. One, one thing that I think brought me or made me more amenable to ethics is mm. when I was a stupid teenager, me and my mates used to talk this sort of shit all the time and just try and outgross each other. And, you know, as you do as a, as a bored teenager, you come up with stupid... Pot's great, right? Yeah. Oh, no, no, this <laughs> was just bored high school. It yeah. wasn't even pot. It was just we had nothing else to do. So yeah. we try and outgross each other. Yeah. And so I don't know whether that was how formative that was for the for the stuff that I'm thinking these days. But having that capacity to think about the, the horrible things and imagine these scenarios and, scenarios and then sit there and go, okay, and what is the wrong-making feature in that scenario? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, that's the basis of what ethics is, is to sit there and go, okay, we've got a response to something. What is the wrong-making feature in that or the right-making mm-hmm. feature? Mm-hmm. And then work it out and then go, all right, does that hold in different scenarios? Is that generalizable? Is it universalizable? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's, so, that's a... That's a really good takeaway. What's the wrong making feature? Mm. I like it because, like, I was going to get us mm. onto you know why you hate Richard Dawkins, but mm. I, I'd see Will has. We done, don't have time for. Well, no. I was going <laughs> to say Will's done a good job of going for longer than an hour. I know, exactly. I know, right? So I, know, I think right. we should leave on the point of yep. what's the talk, wrong making feature. We can bring Adam, Adam back later mm. to exactly. talk about uh, why Richard Dawkins. Dicky Dork, wrong, right? the Dick yep, Dorks. Yep, yep. What's the wrong making feature? What's the wrong yep. making feature? I think that's a good question to ask. Excellent. I've got, I've got a lot of responses to that. All right, listener, tell us where your gut is at, but where is yep. your head? Yep. Where is your head Where's and your, your heart? heart? Where's your heart? Mm-hmm. Exactly. exactly. Where's your heart? Yeah. So which uh, which version of yourself would you make a sex bot mm. of? 24. Fuck, I look good. <laughs> So I just send them out in the world. Yeah, make, make them do groceries for me. The Wholesome Show is me, <laughs> me, Will Grant, him, Rod Lamberts. And we're joined today. Our spiritual advisor. Exactly. Our spiritual ethical advisor, Adam Henschke. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.